No matter where you raise cattle, herd health is critical to the success of your operation. Ticks are a small parasite that can have huge health consequences for your cattle. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck takes us to Kansas for a look at a valuable product from Alanco that can help producers minimize the impact from ticks. Anaplasmosis is estimated to cost U.S. cattle producers $300 million in losses annually. While many associate the disease with the southern and southeastern regions of the country, positive cases of anaplasmosis have been found in almost every U.S. state. Bob Kammerlink of the Kammerlink Cattle Company, a cow-calf and show cattle operation in Leonardville, Kansas, has seen an increase in anaplasts in recent years. We run a cow-calf operation, uh, sell a few club calves along the way. Most of it is commercial as far as that goes, but got granddaughters that are showing. It. It's truly a family operation between my wife Janice and myself, and then I got the two granddaughters and the boys. All of us are involved in this thing. Probably within the last eight to ten years, this anaplasmosis thing has really popped up around here. But there's a lot of guys out here that don't have a clue on this thing. They'll have a cow that dies in a the pasture. They just write it off. They don't even get a vet out to figure out what went haywire. And I think that's one thing that's contributed to the increase of this anaplast thing because a lot of people just don't realize what it is. Dr. Catherine Reif is an assistant professor at Kansas State University in the College of the Veterinary Medicine Department of Diagnostic Medicine Pathobiology. Dr. Reif has been specializing in the study of anaplasmosis in cattle for more than four years. Bovine anaplasmosis is a disease caused by a bacteria called anaplasma marginale. This is a bacteria that lives inside the red blood cells of cattle. When cows first become infected, uh, they can get lots of bacteria in their red blood cells and um, as those blood, red blood cells become damaged, they get cleared from the body, which causes the hallmark disease of anaplasmosis, which is acute anemia. Anaplast can be transmitted a couple different ways. Um, so the natural way that it's transmitted is through the bite of an infected tick. The other way that it can be transmitted is through blood contaminated surfaces. And that can include things like the mouth parts of biting flies. Um, and it can include needles or dehorners or other production instruments uh, that may not get disinfected between use on an infected animal and then a potentially uninfected animal. One of the challenges for producers and veterinarians is that anaplasmosis can be a difficult disease to diagnose. First sign I go by is that if I see a cow that's starting to lose condition, starting to act a little bit lethargic, and they're not staying with the herd as much, we'll pull blood and try to sample it right away. A lot of guys say, well, it's only one cow. Well, yeah, that's one cow, and how many years of production have you lost on that deal? And how many calves have you missed along the way? If you can get your hands on that animal that's behaving a little off, look at its mucous membranes, its, it, its eyes, um, uh, and see if it's pale, that's a pretty good sign that you may be dealing with anaplasmosis. It's really important to act pretty immediately. So uh, get that animal away just to help reduce the stress that that animal is experiencing. Make feeding and watering um, as, as easy as possible. Call your vet out, have them take a blood sample. Sometimes they'll just uh, put a drop of blood on a slide and look at it and they can actually see the anaplasma inside the red blood cell. And if that animal is diagnosed with it or you strongly or your vet strongly suspects it, um, they can begin uh, antimicrobial treatment or intervention to help pull that animal through. Because my understanding, you can have anaplasmosis in these cattle and they can be carriers. So you can just keep spreading it from one to the other. So if I can rid that out of there, then I'm money ahead. Even though I spent $40, I may be saving $1,000 later on. In 2020, the first new treatment for clinical anaplasmosis in many years, Batril 100 CA1 from Elanco Animal Health, received conditional approval from the FDA. Batril 100 CA1 is indicated for the treatment of clinical anaplasmosis associated with anaplasma marginale in replacement dairy heifers less than 20 months of age and all classes of beef cattle except for calves less than two months of age and any bull intended for breeding. 
Traditionally, the primary antimicrobial that's been used to, to treat anaplasmosis is injectable oxytetracycline products. Tetracyclines are bacteria static, which basically means that they prevent the bacteria from replicating any further. Uh, and then within the last year, a new product has been approved and that would be the Batril 100 CA1 product. And what's really unique about that product is it's been conditionally approved for the treatment of clinical anaplasmosis. And that's the only product that currently has um, a specific indication for this disease. It's a fluoroquinolone and rofloxacin, uh, which is actually bacterial cidal, which means that it kills the bacteria. If you have a, a cow that's really experiencing severe signs of clinical anaplasmosis, I would probably go with the, the, the Batril or Enrofloxacin product uh, because we're actually killing the anaplasma, not just simply um, stalling it. We can really help sort out how do you find, identify animals that have the disease or infected or not. Um, what to do about the disease from a management perspective remains the more challenging question and there's no, there's no silver bullet. Certainly we can make recommendations for trying to manage ticks on your operation and you can control ticks through things like cattle insecticide ear tags, dust, sprays, and remain diligent about tick management. I'm a big one as far as using fly tags, I'm using a corral spray. And that's where I go out there in the pasture and I'll have it, I've got a 15 gallon spray tank on the back of that four wheeler that I can go out there and spray those cattle with. But it's not, it's not like one of those heavy emulsifier about concentrates that if you don't keep it stirred, it settles out on you. So that's been a convenience as far as not having to worry about that. And you know, you're getting the right concentration of product out there. Both Dr. Reif and Bob Kammerlink agree that a strong relationship with a veterinarian is vital to combating anaplasmosis. So it's really important that producers have a good working relationship with their veterinarian. Number one, to identify potential problems such as anaplasmosis and then figure out a way that they can best manage it within their own production operation. I've had the same vet since 1974 and he knows my operation, I know him and we can talk back and forth and if I can go call him, give him symptoms of what's going on, he can at least give me a guide on it. For producers, veterinarians, researchers and the industry. It all comes down to the welfare of the animals. It's important to continue research into anaplasmosis because it's a really, really uh, convoluted and complicated disease. So as we better understand how to manage this disease and improve our management of the disease, it improves animal health and welfare and it improves the sustainability of our operations because we can be more efficient with the animals that we have. Reporting from Kansas, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. To learn more about Batril 100 CA1, talk with your veterinarian or go to alancolivestock.com.